guys how's it going sorry i haven't had anything up the last two days i had a basically friends of the family for my entire life one of their sons passed away young kid 28 it's a tragedy so wake yesterday funeral earlier today and i've just been in a blah blah mood but i saw this movie on to on tubi and i said i haven't seen the tunnel a little bit now, I feel like this is the first found footage movie I've done in forever, and re-upping uh, some of those slasher videos recently and hearing me saying found footage Friday, like this week and stuff, like, like I used to do, like very early on, makes me want to do it again. So I gotta go back and start doing more found footage movies, but The Tunnel is a great one. Now, I don't remember when I saw this. It had to have been a, a few years after this came out. Because if I recall correctly, this movie only was screened in America, in North America, for in like a few theaters. And in like a few cities or something like that. It did not get really released here. But this has, I looked, it has a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I mean, that's great for a found footage movie, especially. And I always make that distinction i know i shouldn't like say for a found footage movie but they're very low budget to make just like the slasher film from the 80s so when you have films like this that can get a score like that or that can just do very well financially and stuff i think it's more impressive like as a found footage movie because they're super cheap to make i think this had a budget of like a hundred and something thousand and this came out in 2011. Now, I don't know the director. I don't know anything else they directed. I don't know any of the people in here. This is an Australian movie. Shout out to my few Australian uh, buddies out there. And basically, if you haven't seen the tunnel, it's below Sydney, Australia. There's a, um, there's a whole bunch of abandoned uh, train tunnels, subway tunnels. And this journalist, Natasha, I want to say, starts looking into it. And at first they think there's a government cover-up with something to do with the water. And then they end up going down there. And things do not turn out well for them. I mean, it's on Tubi. It's also on YouTube for free. I remember that because I was going to do this movie like nine months ago. <laughs> and it was on YouTube because I couldn't find it anywhere else. But now I saw it on Tubi. I said, you know what? This is good. And I purposely have the lighting down because you think I'm watching a movie with dark ass tunnels with bright lights and shit. Like I, one or two you every now and then throw that joke out there. Fuck you guys. So let's talk the tunnel for 2011. Now the first thing I got to say about this movie, which I remember very vividly, I've only seen this a few times. The atmosphere is fantastic. It's so good in this. Like this is another one of those movies that makes excellent use of the setting here. The tunnels are terrifying. <laughs> Blood. And, and we hear this all the time. If you're into, like, conspiracy theories and aliens and all that type of shit, like, and look at Jordan Peele's Us with the tethers and shit. I mean, as stupid as that is, <laughs> the whole explanation for it, there's a shit ton of tunnels and stuff underground, like, beneath us. Like, probably a lot more than anybody knows about. So this is this could happen. I mean, maybe not the whole fantastical monster part, but you never know. And it's that's utilized very well here too. Like it's this is not your traditional sound footage movie. It's more of like a mockumentary slash found footage, kind of like a Lake Mungo, which is another fantastic one that makes excellent use of its atmosphere too. Very very good. It's in that type of vein where they're recounting the survivors here from the tunnels, the Natasha, the journalist, and I'm pretty sure it's just the other guy who, yeah, that's his name for now, the other guy, but they're being interviewed and telling the story basically of how they were getting into 
this whole story, how it came about, how Natasha was basically really pushing for this, that she was supposedly like the next up and coming journalist and she would do anything to get her story. And then there's this whole thing with the government cover up that they were supposed to use these abandoned tunnels for like the water system or something like that and then they pulled out from it and there was no reason why and so there's this whole mystique around the tunnels and then they start hearing that homeless people have gone missing living down in these tunnels and instantly that's a story like you got homeless people that are going missing in these tunnels <laughs> so that's what gets them down there that's like the final thing if i remember is that once she hears that she's like there's definitely a story and they go and start checking it out. But you see splices in between the found footage of what actually happened down there that they were filming, spliced with you know them talking and a few other people throughout it. But the atmosphere is fantastic. Like, those tunnels are so dark. Like, this is another one, like, as much as I don't care for it, the Blair Witch Project, excellent use of the woods there for the atmosphere grave encounters probably my favorite location in the found footage movie the asylum excellent usage of the asylum as a location there's a few movies in the found footage genre like the house uh hell house llc the abaddon hotel that's an amazing setting too the tunnels also same thing like i could not imagine being down there in the dark. I mean, yeah, you got lights, but how long does that shit last, right? Like, <laughs> shit's on batteries and everything, right? There's gonna die eventually. I mean, luckily they get out of there, like the two of them, but, oh, can you imagine? Like, if you don't like being... If you're afraid of the dark, or if you're afraid of being lost, or if you're afraid of the dark and being lost at the same time, or losing your mind just from being being in severe fright and panic mode and stuff being down there. I can't imagine. Terrible. That's got to be one of the worst fates. Dying in, in just a dark crypt, basically, is what it is. Uh, it's basically the same thing to me. So, I mean, that's got to be one of the worst ways to go. Burning, drowning, death in dark crypt. Now, another thing I love about this movie that is very reminiscent also of Blair Witch Project and it's something I praise about the Blair Witch Proje Project whenever I talk about it, is, which is not often, <laughs> but what I do. I praise a lot of things in that movie. I just can't watch it. it. It's boring to me. But the whole usage of the interviews in the Blair Witch Project to set the lore up in the beginning is, is fantastic. And same here, with the newscasts and everything, with the news reports, and then they show like some of the history, and they're talking about the history on the tunnels, and the, the subways, and the trains that were, were, like, all of that. And it really builds up, like, the story here. Like, it really gives you, it puts you in this world that they're in. And they do a fantastic job with that, too. So when you're down, when they're down in the tunnels, you feel like you're down there with them. And... It's just a pretty scary movie, man. Like, there's a, there's a very, very good jump scare in this movie. Uh, we'll get to it. But you guys know how I feel about those, like, 90% of the time. But there is a good jump scare in this movie. Like, real good. The cast is great in this, too. Like, this is a found footage movie with very little negatives for me. Like, very little. This is, I forgot where I ranked this on my top found footage movies. But it was pretty high up. I want to say in the top 15 at least, but just the whole, it, yeah, it's about, uh, they wanted to recycle, like, they, they were working on the infrastructure with the tunnels and stuff, and they wanted to, like, reroute the water supply or something down there, and then they ended up kiboshing the whole situation. But yeah, like, all this, the news reports in the beginning, and uh, saying that uh, they mentioned the homeless problem. That there's a big homeless person problem there. And at the same time, they mentioned the United States, that they had to kick off, like, thousands of homeless people out of underground tunnels. So the way they set all of this up just works amazingly for me. And when they finally get down there, you're already creeped out because you don't know what's killing these homeless people. Like, you know these homeless motherfuckers that are being eaten or, or, or kidnapped or killed, one or the other. So it's already set up perfectly for when they go down there. The tension is great because you know something's down there. It's They don't even try to hide the fact. But you don't know what yet. And then when you find out, 
and you see it, it's great. It's terrifying. But yeah, the cast in this, like, I would put this up with a, like, in the highest tier of cast in a found footage movie. Every character is likable of the four main people who go down there. That's pretty much everybody that you're dealing with the whole movie, besides one or two little side characters here or there. But all great people. Like, great characters, believable, the acting is great, it doesn't feel like they're acting at all, it feels like journalists filming a story, the entire film, and it just adds to the authenticity, too. And let me say this, too, the interview with the homeless guy here, I, it's great, but he's a homeless man. I've known people lived on the streets, I still do. They've seen some shit. Trust me, when you see a homeless guy start freaking out when you mention what happened down in those tunnels, <laughs> and the homeless dude is freaking out, and, and yeah, you can chop it up to mentally ill, whatever, but still, if he's freaking out about something that went down in these tunnels, never go down to these tunnels for any reason. If homeless people are fucking freaked from whatever's down there, you don't want to go down there. That's my stance on it. Well, how do you feel? See like this? This isn't spooky. This, <laughs> I'm watching dark ass tunnels, but it, 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 there's there's no atmosphere here. So you you know what you got to do? Bring it down to that perfect atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, people. Like, no one's complaining. I mean, this is me being mad that I can't watch in the dark. So it's nothing to do with anything. So then, after finding this squatting place, they end up going back to the movie. <laughs> They end up going down to this other room, and, like, they find other locations that, like, where soldiers during World War II used to, like, bunk down there in the tunnels. So they found, like, a whole bunch of sinks, showers, like, also, again, shit that you would never use <laughs> under any circumstance. But they find all this, and then they find a bell that they used to use to ring it when, if there was, you know, in the wartime to signify danger. And they, this is like reading, <laughs> reading, this is like ringing the goddamn dinner bell for this creature down here that, yeah, if people haven't seen it and you're still watching it, there's a creature down here. I'm pretty sure you could have gathered that. But it's kind of like a wraith-looking creature or a rake. Yeah, rake. Like, you ever see those vi stupid videos on YouTube? It's just like a small humanoid creature with the glowing eyes and stuff. That's basically what it is. But it moves super fast. Another movie that this reminds me of, The Descent. Same type of atmosphere, that claustrophobic, in the dark, you don't even need the monsters, <laughs> it's terrifying without them. Throw in a rake-like creature that has super speed, and you got a delicious horror movie there. So they're ringing that bell to, and to, for their footage, and the levels, the volume, way too high. Because this bell, like, radiates through the tunnels. And the sound carries extremely well in these tunnels also, which they mention a few times. And the first time they do it, the levels are too high. And then she has to ring it again. Like I said, just like ringing the ding. <laughs> it's so hard to say that. Ringing the dinner bell. Why is that so hard? Say it five times. I can't. But they end up doing it again. Then they do it a third time. And this time, and just a little detail, like, in the interview with... Oh, I always forget his name. The one, the other one who survives, obviously, but I forget his name. Nate, I want to say? It wasn't. Tangles is the guy who gets taken away here. He's the sound guy. And I like that they throw in the little detailed in the interview with the other guy, the camera guy, of him just saying, you know, I'm not a sound guy. Like, I don't know anything about sound. I thought, couldn't he just lower the sound and stuff? None of that has to be there. But it adds to the authenticity of this. Like, it feels more legitimate for some reason it feels more real just with little lines of dialogue thrown in there that did not have to be in here and it's already a short movie but they end up switching places he goes in the other room tangles with the mic in order to catch uh the sound of the bell without the super high levels and the other guy's listening to the headphones and he ends up getting just taken and he disappears and only the guy who was listening so that phone's heard exactly what happened, but he was screaming and he got dragged away by something. <laughs> and time to get out of there. I, and this guy named Tangles, 
it goes on for a little too much. They're running around for at least two minutes screaming, Tangles, Tangles. Just call him his fucking name, Jim. Like, that's his actual name. Like, I'm sure he had nicknames. But in a life or death situation like this, I don't know. I would be screaming my friend's nickname. I'd be screaming out his actual name. Also, what if there was another Tangles living down there who was a homeless person? You don't want his attention. You already got a friggin' monster after you. But the chance that there's another Tangles is a lot less than there being another gym, so. What I do like, too, is that this is a very well-paced found footage movie, also. Like, shit doesn't start hitting the fan until, like, 50 minutes in. Like, Tangles goes disappearing at, like, the 45-minute mark. That's the first of any type of action you get in this movie. But just from all the, the newscasts from the beginning, and then the interview with the homeless guy, and then their shots down in the tunnels, and the atmosphere, the tension, and stuff, all of that just takes you on a ride, man. Like, throughout those first 45 minutes, you're so engrossed in this. Like, if it works for you. But you get so engrossed into the story, and this is the same thing for me with Lake Mungo. That's why I love that movie so much. I know people who do not like it. They find it boring. And I can see that. I can see that with this, too. Until, like, the last... 30 minutes or so of this movie, I can see people thinking this is a very boring film. Because nothing really happens until the 50-minute mark. And still, like, nothing major happens, like, throughout this movie. There's a few scares, but it's all about the atmosphere. And if that doesn't work for you, then this movie's not going to work for you. And I know people don't care for this, too. And usually, coincidentally, same type of... same people who don't like Lake Mungo or other mockumentary found footage movies. But... Man, I love this movie. This, this is a great choice to watch right now. Yeah, because the only other thing that you he- that you see, not even see, you hear in this movie, that besides all the obvious stuff that you know something's down here, which I said works to its benefit, because you know that something's down here and it's going to fucking kill some of these people, you just don't know what. So that's already set up great. So the pacing for me is never an issue here. To me, this is just great atmosphere and tension building. Like, that's what I call it. <laughs> People can call it boring. I completely understand. I can see that side of it, too. Uh, then they end up going into this room. After running around looking for Tangles. Jim. <laughs> Whatever. Such a stupid nickname. And there is blood everywhere. There is blood all over the walls. There's a chair covered in blood. There's blood all over the room. Now it's time to to leave, right? Like, we no, no is the answer for that. And I like that too. Like, even though I'm doing my thing, I always do and breaking down stupid shit. What would you do in this situation? No one's thinking logically. No one's thinking rationally. And they capture that because there's a lot of decisions here. And I think uh, he, uh, he even says it. The surviving guy says that you know maybe it wasn't the smartest thing to do in the moment, but you know you're, we're just working off fear and survival, or something like that, to that effect. But he even says it. So they capture that well, too. So even though I'm harping on stupid shit, like, I mean, they find his torch there. And, you know, in Australia, in England, they call it a torch, a fucking flashlight, like, <laughs> come on, where you think the flashlight name of that stupid brand came from? It came from flashlight, because that's the goddamn word. So they find his flashlight in the corner, and then the guy says, it doesn't mean this. it's it's him, though. It doesn't mean... The, like, come on, man. You find your friend's torch in an abandoned tunnel in a room soaked with blood, and you're saying maybe it's not him? I mean, come on. But again, fear don't matter. I've also heard this critique about this movie and several other found footage movies. The use of non-diegetic sound... I mean, this saying, like, if this is found footage and this is people recording this, then why is there music and score in the background? Because there is some eerie music throughout this. Like, not often, but you hear some non-diegetic music throughout this. It's a mockumentary. It's presented that way. So when they made this mockumentary, they put the music in. I mean, like, that's a very easy way to explain it away. So, I mean, I've heard that criticism, and in other movies, that is... Valid argument, because, like, if it's just a straight-up found footage movie, but at this point, I mean, do whatever you want. If you want to get creative and go outside the boundaries, do it. If it it comes out working, you know, for the audience and for yourself, if you're happy with it, you don't have to stick to the same rules all the time. Like, it's found footage, you can't have music there. 
It doesn't bother me. Other found footage people, I'm sure it might bother the hell out of them. But I can see that argument in movies. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But ones that there's a score there where there obviously should not be. That this is supposed to be all found footage and why is there music on the tape versus a situation like this and i keep bringing up lake mungo if someone hasn't seen lake mungo is watching this please go check that movie out too if you haven't seen this go watch it it's on youtube Tubi, i'm pretty sure has lake mungo or if not it's it's free everywhere check out that movie this is my my uh promotion for lake mungo i haven't talked about it in like a year and yeah this video's all over the place but so is my mind so you guys know how it is by now so Earlier, after they found the homeless place and they were ringing the dinner bell and stuff before that, they're trying to record a segment by, like, what used to be one of the busiest subways or still is in Sydney, like the tunnel right below it. And Tangles, the mic guy, is hearing noises, like whispering. And he has to stop the cut, like, three times because he thinks that they're fucking with him. So he hears something. That's the first of anything weird that they experience down here except for the you know the shit that they've seen already like normal stuff <laughs> i mean sad as it is normal stuff the homeless problem and everything like that it's everywhere it sucks but they didn't see anything weird until he starts hearing that then they ring the bell and then he gets taken away then the security card comes down and they had to sneak past him they tried like bribing him and like <laughs> So they end up just sneaking down here. So no one knows they're down here. So we get this amazing jump scare where he's just saying, all right, come on, you guys are coming with me and stuff because they tell him, listen, we're sorry we came down here, but our friend's missing. Something took him. And now it's, I forget if they say or explain it near the end of this. I'm pretty sure they don't. But it seems like he might have an idea that there's something down here, the security guard. If you've seen this, let me know how you feel about that. Do you think that the security guard here knows that there's something down there in the tunnels, like killing people? I've always wondered that, because he kind of immediately panics and says, all right, come with me now. Like, like he knows we got to get the hell out of here right at this second. So to me, there's a possibility he knows. Of course, the subway guy might not know that exactly what's down there if the government does. But I'm sure he knows something, because he's way too quick. But then, amazing. He ends up, like, leading the way. Uh, then there's just a perpendicular tunnel coming this way. And he just gets snatched by this thing in the blink of an eye. <laughs> snatched away. You don't even really see what it is at all. Great jump scare. Like, really well done. And again, you guys know how I feel about those. I hate 90% of them. That's a great jump scare. He just gets snatched. And this makes me think, I mean, I'm not a camera guy, obviously. <laughs> so this thing looks like it moves faster than the speed of sound. And earlier on, like a scene or two ago, they put down, there was a camera on the floor with the night vision on. And she ends up, Natasha looks at it and says, like, I just felt the urge to, like, check if it picks something up. And they get something on the camera and you can see the creature like run past real fast like i said not a camera guy so i don't know if that's possible i mean this thing looks like it moved so fast they were able to capture the image like long enough to like pause it and get it at like a decent image of it like i don't know but can you imagine being in those dark tunnels being already terrified because one of your friends was snatched and you found his flashlight in a room covered in blood. And now you had some salvation that maybe we can get out of here. Oh, thank God. Somebody who works <laughs> works here knows the tunnels. He can get us out. Uh, then just seeing something, a blur that you can't even see, snatch him away. Dude, I you might as well just get on the floor and, and die. <laughs> Like, a fright just at that moment. Because what are you going to do at this point? And they, I think they hold themselves up in, like, a safe room or something like that. Just, like, get in one room and just stay in there for a little bit. I don't know how well that is. They don't explain, really, like, how this thing hunts. Like, does it hear you? I'm going to guess it's like the Descent. Since it's in a dark-ass place and evolution. Who knows? I forget if they explain any of this. I'm pretty sure they don't, which is good. Because it adds the whole mystique of this whole creature. But... Similar to the descent, I would guess, is that it's good with its ear. 
it's it's ears. It's good with its ears. It can fucking hear well. That's my point. Yeah, this is when Pete, the guy who does not survive, finds out that no one knows they're down there. Her boss doesn't know that she's down here doing this. Oh, man, could you? I would kill her. Like, or feed her to the monster. <laughs> like, of course she couldn't have had any idea that this would go down. I'm just kidding. But can you imagine? This is like, just like I said, like, like Mike kicking the map into, into the river or the creek or whatever the fuck body of water it was. And then them not beating the shit out of him. <laughs> them not kicking Mike's ass in the Blair Witch Project for getting rid of that map is probably the most unbelievable shit in that movie. All right, now I remember more of this. They... They explain a little bit about the creature. Pete ends up getting grabbed by it. Another cool jump scare. Nowhere near as good as that main one with the security guard. But he ends up getting pulled back, and Nate turns with the camera, and as soon as the light hits the creature, it disappears and runs away. So they figure out that the light may be able to be their way of getting away from this thing. That if they stay in the light, then it won't come for them. And damn, man, this movie's so claustrophobic. <laughs> like, it's so well with that. They did so good with that, too. Some of these tunnels, like, when you see, like, some of the tunnels in the beginning, like, they're wide train tunnels and stuff like that, subway tunnels. When they're running here, like, near the... Well, third, in the decently into the third act, like, not near the end, but close to it, they're, the tunnels that they're going through are, like, this wide. Like, a little wider than me. Like, just enough that you could run through. That's got to be so terrifying. <laughs> Being in the dark, and your shoulders are hitting the tunnel, like, the sides of the walls. Like, while you're running from a creature that you have no idea what it is, but it killed two people already. Oh, man. Like, it's just, they do such a good job with everything in this movie. This is such an underrated found footage movie. Even though that people know this movie, even though it's, got a pretty good following at this point most especially if you're a found footage fan you've you've seen or heard of the tunnel at least but it's still underrated like very underrated and like i said i forget where i ranked this but definitely in the top 15 like found footage movies ever made like it's it's that it's that damn good so again plug for them if you haven't seen the tunnel and you're watching this go see the tunnel it's free on fucking youtube you have no excuse great scene when they're um in this one room, and they see, I'm pretty sure this is a security guard, right, with his eyes gouged out, and he's just walking, and then the creature comes and, like, breaks its neck or something, kills it, and then it starts crawling towards it. That's when it looks just like a rake, with the glowing eyes and everything, and they run like friggin' hell like they damn well should. What? That's a great scene, too. Uh, then they stumble upon, like, a whole bunch of human eyes, that it looks like we're, that this thing ripped out of people, man, I would be so gone. Like, I don't even know if they know where they are at this point. Like, right? Like, I know that they've like tried to find their way out a few times and kind of knew where they were going because they do have a blueprint. But at this point, they've been running so much. There's no way they have any idea where they are. There's, n I don't know. I don't even remember how they get out of here. It's been a while since I've seen this, but I'm excited to see. Just the way that they shoot the creature in this movie, you never really see it much. You see the eyes mostly, the glowing eyes and the outline of it. Like you get an awesome creepy shot when it's crawling on the ceiling and they're hiding in the dark and stuff. That looks awesome. But Grave Encounters is like my second favorite found footage movie ever made. And that's my only critique with it. Is it the CGI faces for the ghosts was not needed. Like, they did not have to do it. It doesn't take anything away from it, really, at this point for me. But at the time, I th that was my only real criticism for it. They, they should have done it like this. Like, cause this is how you do it. Don't really show this creature much at all. And they do a great job at that. All right, I'm really not remembering this movie. <laughs> like, as it's going on, is this supposed to be an alien? Down there, because it looked just like a, an alien just now. Like, you get the one shot when it attacks the guy, and you see it through the, the night vision. It looks like a gray alien. Like, so is it supposed to be that? Like, I, I really don't remember the ending of this movie. Like, if they ever say, like, this is, we found whatever down there, and that it was a conspiracy by the government. or I don't remember how this ends at all. And it doesn't seem like a creature. Like, even though it moves weird, moves fast, it kind of looks like a more of a man. 
like a creature man, a man creature. <laughs> it looks like an alien though. So let, let me know. Let me know if I'm just like totally misrem misremembering this movie. But I always thought it was just like a rake type creature, which it looks like in the early, earlier on in the movie. The more it goes on though, it, it looks more like, a, like an alien. Then Nat ends up getting taken. <laughs> and you think that's it for her, but she ends up surviving. But why would an alien be ripping out human beings' eyes for some reason? I don't know. But hey, you never know. So we find out they escape out of the tunnel. Pete ends up dying from his internal bleeding, so he doesn't make it out. Which sucks, man. He was so close. And Natasha ends up, she quits being a journalist. Which, yeah, good career call. Tangle's body was never discovered. And his family still looking for answers to this day. Oh, uh, yeah. And his name is Steve. It's not Nate. <laughs> So forget that from way back then. Steve, he, they do say, he ends up still, like, working, you know, in broadcasting and stuff like that. Tangles, he's gone, can't find him. Uh, then they make a statement about what the police say. They say that the police investigation was closed due to contradictory evidence. Uh, then that no police or government officials or whatever that they reached out for for this mockumentary, uh, you know, agreed to be there. So... It's definitely some type of cover-up. It's definitely some type of monster down there. The fact that they don't explain it, which I was pretty sure they didn't. But yeah, I didn't remember a, a lot of the ending of this. Great found footage movie. Like, excellent movie. The tension, atmosphere, the, the, the building of the world and the reality that you get to live in while watching this for 90 minutes. It's all fantastically done. So, this was fun. This got my mind on some things, but... Um, Demons 2 with Dave at Savage, jo Savage Zombie Reviews on uh, Tuesday on my channel. Probably 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when me and Dave usually can do that. So we did Demons like two weeks ago, so we're going to do Demons 2 this time. And I got to think of a new franchise to do since uh, we finished Hatchet for like the weekly watch party. So you got to think of something new. Let me know. Comments. Think of a franchise. We'll do that. Or whoever thinks of the best one. So, take care, guys. If this is a whole, like, government conspiracy, then maybe he doesn't know the whole length of it and stuff, but, you know, how they carp... How they carp... How they break down... <laughs> Whatever I was talking about, I don't even remember. Break down stuff of... Inf break down... Inf this is getting edited now, right? Mm -hmm.